<laughs> you can see through Eevee, that's great. So you're doing some temples in the current banner while you don't get a five star. You do get Faith, Trust, and Pixie Dust, also known as Fremine. Now what do you get with Fremine besides the other third sibling? Well, Fremine is a Claymore Wield and Cryo user who some have called an off-brand Eula, myself included, I must admit. Um, but he doesn't really actually work that way. But we're gonna get into why people call him that. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the basics of Fremine, how his skill, his burst, and his normal attack work, as well as some artifacts and some weapons. So first, we are gonna look at the current build of the Fremine that we are using. I did give Fremine uh, Eula's artifacts and weapons. Uh, I'm not helping my cause with what I said. Now, my Fremine is level 20 out of 40. His attack is uh, 1800. His crit split is 36.5 over 160. He is running four piece Pale Flame and a level 90 Wolf Scrapestone. I said I gave him Eula's set. For constellations, he is C6. Real quick, let's run through the constellations and what they do. Uh, C1 is just going to increase the crit rate of his skill, which is going to be good. Uh, the uh, constellation two just means a little bit more energy. C3 is going to be a normal one. C4, after triggering like Superconduct, Shattered, um, or Frozen, then it is going to increase his attack. C5 is a normal one. C6 is going to increase his crit damage after triggering Shattered, Superconduct, or Frozen with a max of three stacks. So this allows him to be a fairly good on-field damage dealer with getting the increase in crit rate and the increase in crit damage. Now, we're also gonna run through his passives. Whenever he unleashes his skill, uh, if Pear's timer has yet to reach pressure level four, the cooldown of his skill is going to be reduced by one second. And his other passive, uh, which I actually do not have yet on this Fremine, is going to be that whenever he triggers Shattered specifically against opponents, the damage dealt by his skill is going to be increased by 40%. So in order to uh, do Shattered, you have to have Hydro and Cryo, and then hit it with a Blunt, or in this case, a Claymore. That would do Shattered, that would trigger this passive. So now we are going to go look at his normal attacks, his skill, and his burst. So real quick, going into this domain to help because he is level 20, I am going to be using Layla's Shield some just so that way uh, it takes me less takes to do this for my own sanity. I am going to be using Layla's Shield. Also, this particular domain does have an increase in physical damage. I just wanted to put that out there so that way nobody says that I'm hiding anything about the damage that my level 20 from Renee is doing because he hits higher than I thought he would. So for his normal attacks, they are going to be relatively normal. However, you are going to be using them a lot with his kit uh, he does do some consecutive hits and then his charge attack is the Beyblade variant for the Claymore users he does have a really really good animation he's not like a super slow normal attacker with a Claymore now for his skill his skill is going to do an instance of cryo damage as well as putting pairs up next to you with a gauge every time that you do a normal attack it is going to increase the gauge by one up to a maximum of four at any point in time, if you were to hit his skill button again or his E again, uh, if it is one, two, or three charges, it is going to do an upward slash of cryo damage, hitting any enemy within its, uh, not necessarily area, but within its range. If you make it to the fourth gauge, then you can hit his E again or just follow it up with another, uh, another normal attack and it will do the same thing. And it's gonna do a coordinated physical damage with pairs. This is the uh, pressurized state that as we were looking at his uh, passives, this was talking about. Uh, this right here, having pairs with the pressurized gauge going up whenever you activate it, whenever you use his E again, or you go all the way up to the four stack. That is the pressurized state that is getting the extra crit rate, that is getting the extra damage from his constellations and his passives. Now, you can see that Fremine is currently hitting around 20,000 damage with a crit on his skill with the four gauge uh, stack from pairs. That is really, really good, especially for level 20. Um, now, this is where the majority of his damage is going to come from. It's going to be coming from getting this gauge to max, to four stacks or four uh, ticks, four marks, four something, getting this gauge all the way uh, increased. So that way you can do the coordinated attack with pairs to get the physical damage, which would also cause shattered. If you, if you were to hit an enemy with that, it would shatter them if they were frozen. But doing this is where the majority of his damage is going to come from. Now, we're going to look at his burst. 
His burst is going to, to do an instance of AoE cryo damage. It is also going to reset the skill and make its cooldown decrease by 70%. Also, it's going to give a uh, damage increase to whenever you use uh, whatever you use up his gauges from pairs. So what this means is that you are going to be using his skill a ton. This burst allows you to use his skill over and over and over again in very, very quick succession, getting a lot of damage, getting a lot of cryo application, getting a lot of physical damage by building up pairs to maximum gauge. It also makes it to where every normal attack, instead of charging the pressure gauge by one, it charges it by two. So that way, two normal attacks, you're already at full charge with the pairs gauge instead of having to go through four. By the time you do his burst, his skill, normal attack, normal attack, normal attack to get the four gauges and then use the pressurized thing to get the, uh, the fourth gauge to get that coordinated attack with pairs, which is also being increased in the damage by this burst. His skill is already cooled down. You can just do it again and do it again and do it again and do it again and do it again. If you take Fermine off the field once you've activated his burst, his burst will end. If you put him back on the field, uh, you just lose it. You don't get to use it. It's not like Arlecchino, not like Father, where you can take Arlecchino off uh, with the Pyro Infusion and then take her, uh, put her straight back on and keep the Pyro Infusion. If you use his burst, you take him off, you lose it. So use it. I kind of like that, right? So now we are going to look at some artifact sets for Fremine. Obviously, Pale Flame is phenomenal if you want his damage to come from his uh, physical damage with pairs. Now, for a beginner or earlier game, uh, using something like a two-piece martial artist to get up his skill damage is going to be good. I would not say four-piece. The four-piece is just going to reset the skill if you beat an enemy, but I would rather say to do two-piece uh, martial artist, two-piece exile to get his energy recharge up so that way you can just use his burst as often as possible, which resets his skill cooldown or decreases it to where you can, and that's where you get a lot of your damage, where you increase the damage of the skill. So having that extra energy, in my opinion, would be better than having the possibility of a skill cooldown reset. Now, for the main stats, you have a couple different options. Attack percent on the sands, always. For the goblet, you can either run another attack you can run a physical or a cryo, depending on where you want his damage to come from. If you want his damage to come from the coordinated pairs attack, then you want to do physical. If you want his uh, cryo hits to do more damage, then you are going to be running a cryo goblet for uh, the circlet, crit damage, crit rate, whichever you're in more need of. Now, I say that because we're going to talk about cryo resonance uh, for just a second in a second. But first, we're going to look at weapons. So we do have several options earlier game for weapons. Of course, you have Snow Tomb Star Silver, which you get for free in um, uh, Dragon Spline. Dragon Spine. Dragon Spine. You get the ability to craft it by doing a quest in Dragon Spine, which gets up a physical damage bonus, which is going to be good. You also have um, Serpent Spine, which is a battle pass weapon, so you can get that just upon getting the battle pass. You always have Archaic, which Archaic is actually going to be very, very good for Fremini. He's going to enjoy the attack increase, uh, plus the passive is just an extra instance of damage. For a 3-star, you do have Skyrider Greatsword, which is going to be very, very good because it also gets a physical damage. And normal attacks increase his attack overall, and he's going to be using a lot of normal attacks. This can be very, very good for Fremini as well. Now, we are going to be looking at a team for Fremini. So on this team, we have Fremini, Fischl, Layla and Coco. Now we have Layla here. Layla can be replaced by any other cryo character. I like her shield and, and Layla we trust. But we want the cryo resonance. Increased crit rate against enemies afflicted by cryo uh, by 15%. So we are going to be able to invest more into crit damage with Fremine because his crit rate is going to be coming from his constellations and from cryo resonance. Now, if you were to put Rosaria in for Layla, that would be even more crit rate. So you can invest more into crit damage. But this would be the basics of a team. We want to be causing superconduct. Superconduct makes the enemy weaker to physical damage. We want something to help resistance to interruption, which we have Layla for her shield, as well as cryo application and tenacity. So that's going to be really, really good. Then we have Coco. Coco is there as a healer and to apply hydro off field. So we have off field cryo, off field electro, and off field hydro, meaning that we can cause frozen, superconduct, 
and get cryo resonance all with this team so that way Fremine can kind of run rampant, right? Uh, Fischl will be doing a substantial amount of damage off field as well. We have Coco healing and applying Hydro, Layla shielding. We're gonna put up Layla's shield, swap to Fremine, use his burst, and then just go to town. Not having to worry about Fremine taking damage because Layla's shield is super, super good. But this is also gonna cause Superconduct. Superconduct with Fischl is, is going to decrease the enemy's physical resistance, meaning that Fremine can do more physical damage with that coordinated attack from pairs. This is actually a really good team. And level, uh, and I actually had to do uh, like the third, like the level 67 enemies. And you'll see how easily I run through them with uh, with Fremine. Even though Fremine is only level 20. Like, it's crazy to me that this team actually works well together. Another team that you can do, which is a really interesting team that I've never, ever played, and that is going to be a, sh a Hyper Shatter team, where you're going to be using Fremine, Kuki, Nihita, and Shingcho. Uh, Fremine and Shingcho are going to be causing freeze on the enemy they're going to freeze them but because cryo and dendro have no reaction they can exist at the same time we can still make blooms off of them with nahida kuki triggering the blooms as well as giving superconduct to fremine so that way fremine can still do a ton of damage this team was a lot of fun the only thing that i did not necessarily like about this team was the um the grouping neither of the two teams that we run in this had any kind of grouping i could definitely see this working a lot better on one enemy like a boss these two teams could be actually fairly good and a lot of fun on boss enemies not so much with enemies spread out that was really annoying running around um and without having a grouper without having an animo which would only increase your cryo damage not your physical damage it's i can see this being uh not as fun with a group of mobs instead of a single boss enemy. But this team was a lot of fun, and it makes me really think about kind of building out Fremine to use in this exact team. So that is going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, do be sure to leave it down in the comments. Myself or somebody else, be sure to answer it, and I'll see you in the next one.